Hey folks, today we are going to talk about inclusions. This is a question we've gotten a number of times and there's a few ways to, to add inclusions into your chocolate. The most important thing is understanding chocolate and how to make it and then what you're adding. So for example, if we're going to add milk powder into our chocolate, we're probably needing to add additional cocoa butter. So there's a number of different tricks on adding inclusions. And then there's also inclusions and infusions. So let's, let's understand what an inclusion is. It kind of is all encompassing. It could mean we're adding fruit powders, or it could mean we're adding um, nibs and coffee on top of the bar. Then there's single origin. So we're gonna separate everything into two categories. There's single origin chocolates that are just plain, and that's what we want to focus on. However, the market doesn't let us, so we make lots of inclusion bars, which are also really fun because we're really lucky chocolate goes with so many other ingredients out there. So, single origin bars are just the beans from a single origin of the world with some sugar. Cocoa butter also fits into that in equation if you want to add extra cocoa butter or say, you know, even soy lecithin or sunflower lecithin. Then you've got inclusions, which could be anything from um, nuts getting topped on the bar or uh, mango powder getting infused into the grinder. And then there's different types of grinders that you could use to infuse this. So let's, let's back up a little bit. We've got uh, powders, oils, toppings. At Manoa Chocolate, we play with pretty much all of them. So let's use some examples here. This is our Hawaiian sea salt. We make pretty much a single origin chocolate style. In this case, we have a world blend. And then we add Hawaiian sea salt on top at the very end after we have molded chocolate bars. That's a topping inclusion. Or I've also heard them called decorations. Goat milk. This is a milk powder. And anytime you're making a milk chocolate, you have to add milk powder. You cannot add any liquid. We've covered this in past episodes because the cacao seed has so much cocoa butter in it. So you have to add milk powder. So in this case, we simply add a goat milk powder into our ball mill. You can also add it into a stone melander. Doesn't matter. So that's how you would do an inclusion versus an infusion here. Lavender. We've done this different ways. In fact, this was really tricky for us to figure out because lavender is a, a floral note that'll burn off as soon as you hit a certain temperature, and we didn't realize how low that was. Side note, lavender flowers, we usually soak it in cocoa butter for a while, warm cocoa butter, and then we'll add everything into our stone melangers. And the reason we do that is the dried lavender flowers they give off their floral note in the cocoa butter, but primarily when they go into the stone melangers and the stone wheels start to crush them up, all these little fibers start coming off. You get a really nice floral infusion into the chocolate. So we don't do this in our ball mill, we do it in our stone melanger. And then it's pretty fast. And in fact, in a couple hours, we're able to take the chocolate out, but we have to strain everything. And so we'll strain all of these crushed up lavender fibers into any type of mesh, and then we can take that chocolate and temper it, and it's got the flavor that we're going for. Our breakfast bar. This is one of our most popular ones, like our Hawaiian sea salt. We do this at the very end again. So on our vibrating conveyor line, after we mold the chocolate, we'd run the mold on the vibrating conveyor, the chocolate levels out, the bubbles come up, we immediately start topping it with nibs and coffee, liberally applying it, because we want even crunch and texture in every single bite. So that's how we do our breakfast bar and then they go into the refrigerator. Hawaiian milk chocolate, same way as goat milk chocolate. We add the milk powder into the ball mill or the stone melanger. In fact, we haven't used the stone melangers to add anything except basic inclusions like chili pepper and lavender for a long time because we want the texture that the ball mill can produce at a scale that makes sense. So that's how the, the milk powder would, would work. And then ghost pepper. So this one, we actually, our neighbor grows ghost peppers, extremely hot. And what we would do is we dehydrate them because you can't have any water. We extract the seeds. We put it in a coffee grinder and turn it into a powder. At that point, we'll weigh out, in our case, I think we're doing something like six grams 
of ghost pepper powder to about 500 chocolate bars. So a full stone melanger like this, which is somewhere around 20, 25 kilos of chocolate. It's about a spoonful for this much chocolate. It's kind of an amazing uh, potency. So yeah, let's talk about a few other things. When you're adding milk powders or any powders like banana powder or mango powder, you also will need to add cocoa butter in most cases because it'll make the viscosity of the chocolate so thick that you won't be able to, the machines won't be able to process it and you then won't be able to temper it. So you'll also have to add additional cocoa butter if you don't want to add soy lecithin. And we don't add soy lecithin or, or any lecithin for that matter, but we do add extra cocoa butter. I think it tastes better when we do. So that's our own style. It doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Um, we do one chocolate that is an inclusion that's extremely difficult every now and then, honey. Honey has got water in it. And so, as we know, you're not supposed to add water in chocolate. When we add honey, we can get away with a certain amount on a very small batch size and still get it to temper. As soon as we increase the batch size too much, the entire mass of chocolate literally seizes up and turns into this big brownie mix looking consistency. It's a terrible headache to deal with. But we do on a small batch, we'll do honey bars, especially for one of our customers on Kauai. It's an amazing combination. It tastes really, really good. But I, uh, I had a chocolate maker's revolt where they said, Dylan, if you want honey, you make it yourself. So <laughs> we stopped doing it regularly, even though it was one of our most popular chocolate bars. Now we do it occasionally for another customer. But this is how you do inclusions. It's more practice, so you gotta just work with chocolate to, to start to understand how it behaves and then also understanding what you're adding. So it's just practice and time. And uh, yeah, it's fun to do and everyone's gonna appreciate your attempts because they get to eat it. So cheers, good luck, see you next time.